someone's wanting to know how to get revenge on someone who spread rumors about you, listen to this story and it may come in handy. So I had a friend that we can call Miranda who was obsessed with me. I was genuinely friends with her, but she would never give me a break. I could not get a breather from her at any point in time. Everywhere I went, she went. And this girl would actually get so upset with me anytime I would go over to another friend's house. I knew she was really insecure and just trying to get attention, so I tried to be patient with her. However, one day I just could not take it anymore. I got into a massive fight with her over how overprotected she is. I literally said, you are a stage five clinger. And in response, this girl ended up joining my basketball and softball team, which I've been on for forever. She told her mom that I was bullying her, which was a complete lie, but then her mom went to the coaches. She got me kicked off the team and they continued to spread rumors about me. I ended up losing my best friends and even my boyfriend over the rumors that she spread about me. So that's when I decided to get revenge. So I decided that I was gonna send her over an apology gift with makeup in it, which was a mix of drugstore items and poison ivy. So I got revenge on my obsessive best friend for spreading rumors about me. So I put together an apology gift for her for um, bullying her, even though I did not. The gift that I put together was some makeup I got from Walgreens, but I decided to add some poison ivy to the eyeshadow so that she would get a rash. I then set up a hidden camera and watched as she put it on. And as expected, the rash started to form. After she noticed, I started to tell her off and accuse her of all the stuff she did to me. And she was so pissed that I managed to get a confession out of her. She was very much just like, yeah, I did that. Literally over me not wanting to spend every waking second with her. And the best part of it is that she threatened me on camera. So I cut out the part about the poison makeup and told her if she didn't tell my friends, coaches, and significant other what, what she was doing. I would send the video to everyone so she admitted to all of her crimes and I got back on the team, I got my friends back, and my boyfriend apologized. I ended up totally fine and she ended up losing credibility with basically everyone. Am I the asshole for letting my brother call me dad and refusing to tell him the ugly truth? I was born when my parents were both 19 and my only brother, let's call him Josh, was born when they were 42. They divorced shortly after Josh was introduced into the world. He was four months old at the time and they both wanted nothing to do with the child. At the time, I was 23, and I was living alone with my then-girlfriend, who was 21, now my wife. And I'd done my best to convince at least one of them to take care of young Josh for his sake and the family's sake. They refused adamantly and said that I should be taking custody of him instead. So I became the legal guardian of my brother, and he's been living with us for the past 12 years. Things have been going really smoothly for us. Josh, now almost 13, has been calling me dad and my wife mom. And our two children, four female, nine male, his siblings, and he has absolutely no idea about his real parents. And to be honest, I let all of that slide. He has no idea that I'm really his blood brother and not his father. And I'm starting to feel guilty and a little weird. Some of my uncles and aunts come to visit occasionally, and they are really disgusted at the fact that he calls me dad, and they are surprised that I haven't told him the truth. They constantly message me, talk to me in private, and I cannot chat to them without this one particular topic rising up, badgering me to let him know already, but I refused. I discussed this with my wife, and she thought it would be wrong to tell him the truth because none of my parents wanted to take care of him, and I'm the only person in the world who gave him the father figure everyone deserves. I feel that he has the right to know what he is to me, and I truly am to him. But he's suffered enough already, and I just want things to continue how it is. Am I the asshole for telling my kid's teacher to stop fishing for information that's none of her business? I'm raising an 8-year-old boy who is technically my nephew, but we are not that it's a complicated story. He's been with me since he was five and calls me Uncle Mike. His teacher, Miss L, has been complaining about his behavior. I asked her for examples and then asked her if other boys in her class displayed the same behavior because it sounds like typical third grade boy behavior. We really weren't making any progress until she asked me about Aiden's home life. I thought she was going to ask about his sleeping habits. She said, well, meant about his parents. I asked her if this whole thing was an excuse to dig for personal information, and if it was, then she's a sorry excuse for a teacher and a human being. She was taken aback by my comment and said she didn't know if there was something she should know about. I told her if she has something to say, then say it. Do not waste my time by asking to meet me under false pretenses just so you can fish out why I'm raising my nephew. It's none of her business. She said she'd try again when I was not so emotional, and I said try again when you're not so nosy. Today she apologized for everything and said there was no excuse for knowing things that she didn't need to know. She said she wanted to start over. I think she expected me to apologize and I didn't. I told her I don't hold grudges and apology accepted. My brother and his partner adopted Aiden at birth. Both of them are away for a very long time. I wasn't going to let Aiden go into foster care, so I took him in and he's doing quite well. My boyfriend tattooed me against my will. My boyfriend is a tattoo artist. Two days ago, I was passed out due to drinking slightly more than I should have. Anyway, I've made it clear a few times to my boyfriend that I don't like tattoos, 
that I'm not planning on getting any. So while I was sleeping, he, who was drunk too, tattooed the phrase made in Greece on the sole of my right foot. I'm Greek. When I woke up later, he told me what he had done and I got super mad at him. He felt bad too though. He said that he regrets it, but that he didn't think I'd mind so much. On the positive side, at least it's somewhere where it isn't always visible. Still though, I'm super mad that I'll have to live the rest of my life with that written on my foot. This is a story time of why I don't eat at other people's house no more. Me and my best friend, we were like 11 or 12 at the time and we were having a sleepover at her house. We had hung out outside of school many times before. This would just be the first time I went over to her house. My mom drops me off and just lets me walk inside. When I went up to the door, my best friend answered and she was like, hey, can you grab a shoe? Immediately I could tell that the house wasn't very clean, but I knew it wasn't her fault. It's not because she asked me to grab a shoe. I could see the whole time and tell that the house was just really messy. It really did look like an episode of Hoarders, but I grabbed a shoe and I helped her look for that fly. So it was me, my bestie, and her grandma looking for this big ass bug. We got a little tired so we sat down to eat something and her grandma made us a snack. I was a little scared to eat, not gonna lie, but I didn't want to make my best friend feel bad so I went ahead and ate my food. Well, I was only able to eat some of it because we had left the basement door open and we saw the bug fly down there. So we stopped eating, ran down to the basement, and we saw the bug fly behind this box. We moved this box and I swear 100 families of spiders and their ancestors started spewing out, like for part two. This is gonna be part two of why I don't eat at other people's house no more. Like I said, so many spiders started spewing out from behind this box. I genuinely thought that these spiders were going to eat all of us alive. It was not a fun situation. We did not run fast enough. These spiders started crawling all over us. I think I saw a lighter somewhere and considered setting myself on fire. I want you guys to imagine like my whole entire body covered up with spiders. That's what it felt like, but there was only like five or six on me. The grandma gets a blanket and starts whipping us with it. She's like trying to dust the spiders off. I see my best friend start stripping. I was a little uh, about that, but I was like, fuck it. Anything to get these spiders off. Once we felt like we were good, we ran upstairs. My best friend started crying to me and apologizing and saying how much she hates her life and how she's so embarrassed. But I told her that all is good and this doesn't change the way that I see her at all. We have our little moment and then we sit down to eat again. And you know, I'm going in on my little spaghettios. But all of a sudden, they start getting crunchy. I ignore it and I get down to the bottom of the bowl. When I look down, there is a half-eaten spider in the bottom of the bowl. Like for part three. This is going to be part three of why I don't eat at other people's house anymore. More. So like I said, I was munching and grunching on some spaghettios, it's getting crunchy and I'm like, what's this crunch? Where's all this crunch coming from? I was like, bruh, it's probably some expired spaghettios, but let me finish this bowl so my friend don't feel bad. And I got to the end and there was only some soup left. I saw a half eaten spider, the same spiders that we had seen downstairs. My body? It started vibrating. I was shaking. I seized out. I think I passed out. This was not a good situation. I did have a phobia of spiders. I told my best friend, listen, babes, I love you. You know I love you, but this cannot go on no longer. I'm gonna have to go home. I felt like such a terrible friend, but I did call my mom and she came to get me and she took me home. I told her what happened and she was upset with my friend's grandma. From then on, we only had sleepovers at my house and ever since my family found out about her living situation, we would go over there sometimes to help them clean. We would bring food and games. I'm grown now, but me and this girl ended up falling out because of some drama. When I was younger, there was a girl I knew who lived in our neighborhood. None of the kids liked her because they claimed that she stinked and acted weird when they talked about her. I kind of felt bad, so I became friends with her. Yeah, of course, I got the, why do you hang out with her? But she really wasn't all that bad. But her scent, they were kind of right about that. One day, she invites me over to her house, and she was very excited because she told me I was the first person to ever come over. And I felt so honored, so I went. But when I went into her house, it smelled very bad. Almost nauseating, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be rude. She had a lot of uncles that lived with her family. Honestly, it was like four to five families in one house, to be honest. But she first introduced me to her stepmom. I said hi to her, but she just stared at me in disgust. Then we went to her room to play. As it got later, I told her I needed to go home. But she begged me to stay longer because she was scared. I told her I'd come tomorrow, and she just starts crying runs into her bed and falls into her sheets which lifted her skirt there were bruises all over her thighs let me know if y'all want a part two part two about the girl i know who lived in my neighborhood so it's late and it's time for me to go home she said she was scared and starts crying then she runs into her bed and flops into her sheets her skirt lifted and there were bruises all around her thighs i asked her what happened she looks down and quickly pulls her skirt over her bruises i asked did someone do that to you and she says she can't tell me i asked why she responds if i do they're going to hurt me so i ran downstairs to her stepmom and told her what i saw she sits and laughs in my face. I was so confused and asked her, are you gonna help her? 
and she tells me that little hoe can help herself and that I actually should be going home. So I went into the living room where her uncles were and told them. One of them had said, that's why that girl don't need to be bringing random folks into the house and runs upstairs to her room. One of the other uncles asks, you want to get popped? I shook my head in fear and said no. And he yells at me, telling me to go home. From there, I ran home and never came back. And after that day, she never came back outside. It's been seven years. To this day, I wonder what happened to her. Story time of how my best friend got so weirdly obsessed with me that she even plotted to kill my boyfriend. So at the time, me and this girl, let's just call her Olivia, had only been friends for about two years. I mean, we really did everything together. We were with each other 24-7, and I mean, we were pretty good friends. But the only thing about our friendship is she did not like when I had other friends. I mean, she didn't have any other friends herself, but literally she would joke around about strangling my other friends because she didn't like when I gave my attention to anyone else. But honestly, I just thought of it as a joke. And then I started dating this guy, let's just name him Jacob. He was probably the sweetest guy I had ever met, and he was a real simp for me. So we started dating, and about four or five months go by, and he started getting these texts from a random number and it would always be cringy things like leave her or you die get away from her and like stupid cringy threats then one night me and him were just hanging out then he gets a text with his exact address saying he had till tonight to leave me or he wouldn't see another day then we hear a knock at the door i'm running out of time like for part two part two of how my best friend got so weirdly obsessed with me that she plotted to kill my boyfriend so continuing on with the story we heard a knock at the door and it ended up being her and she said, oh, I'm just coming by to check on you and make sure you're okay. Mind you, we were at his house. And he looks at me like, um, what is she doing here? So I asked her to leave and then she ends up getting so mad at me just because I asked her to give us alone time. So the night goes on. And then when I get home, she's in my room. At this time, my whole entire family was out of town and I was the only one home. So I was like, oh, um, hey. It was literally just like a normal night. And then I go to shower. And when I get back out of the shower, she's gone. And then my boyfriend calls me. And he goes, why is Maddie here? She had like this black mask on, but she's stupid enough to not realize that we know it's her. And I mean, we're being real here. She was my best friend at the time. So of course he's not going to call the police on her. But she had a knife in her hand and he opens the door and he like pins her against the wall and then calls 911, I guess. And then to sum it up, when they get there, she tells them everything that she was going to do. And then they put her in a mental hospital. Oh, she said that she was going to murder everybody that gets Am I wrong for wanting my sister to walk me down the aisle despite my fiancé and his family's objections? So I was basically raised by my older half-sister. I never met my dad and our mum passed away when we were both young. My sister's dad was still in her life and was willing to support her but not me. My sister decided that she wanted to be my guardian and as a result of that her family went low contact with her. In order to raise me she gave up a lot. She gave up her 20s, the opportunity to go to college and so much more. So a couple of months ago I got engaged and along with being my maid of honour I asked if my sister would walk me down the aisle and throughout my life she has fulfilled so many roles for me she's been my big sister my mom my dad my friend so it only felt right that all of those big roles were honored on one of the biggest days of my life and my sister was absolutely ecstatic but when i brought this up to my fiance he was not happy my fiance's family are extremely traditional and he'd always expected his wedding to be a traditional white wedding and his reasoning for this is because that role is normally done by a man and apparently it had always been assumed that his father would be the one to give me away considering I don't have any male relatives. And I did tell him that I was really appreciative of his dad wanting to be the one to give me away. But I said, my sister's the one that's made me who I am today, so it's only right that she's the one that gives me away. So this then turned into an argument that spread into my in-laws. My mother-in-law called me a few days ago and said, even though she understands how important my sister is to me, that it's also my fiance's big day too, and I shouldn't be putting my sister in front of him on his big day. I definitely understand what she has to say, but this is really important to me. And at this point, my sister's turned around and said that she doesn't even mind just being maid of honor because she doesn't want a happy day to turn so stressful. So now it's just me holding out and being stubborn. But I just don't want to give in at this point. So what do you think? Am I wrong for not wanting to split expenses proportional to income? I live with my boyfriend in a flat he owns. Fully paid off, his father gave it to him. The whole building was built six years ago and it's in a very popular area. I pay my boyfriend half of the market rate rent, which we update every year by looking at how much the flats are being rented out for in the building complex, which is a lot of money, but I agreed to it. Other than this, we did everything else 50-50 in the past. I got a new job with significant pay increase and now my boyfriend says we should start splitting expenses proportional to income because that's fair. Ew! Drop him! Drop him! Drop him! What the heck? 50-50 is easy. That's like the right moral way to do things. Ew. He got a free flat. He got a free apartment and he's asking what's fair or not. 
I told him I don't think it's fair that I should start paying for more just because I got a new job and nothing else changed. I already paid him rent, enough rent that would get me a same size flat a few streets away so it's more than fair to him. He had some, in my opinion, very weak arguments and accused me of ripping him off. That's when I told him that under no circumstances we will split expenses proportional to income. Now that I've calmed down a bit, I'm worried whether I'm in the wrong, especially since my best friend told me that this is how they do it with her boyfriend too and my boyfriend owning the flat is irrelevant here. So am I the asshole? Uh it is not a <laughs> lost my virginity before marriage and my parents want me to prove my virginity to them what should i do I come from an extremely religious family in my culture women should be virgins before they get married so here's how i lost my virginity to my cousin my parents are super strict i grew up hiding everything from my parents when i was 14 this new girl came to my school and she basically corrupted me i had never in my life before even kissed a boy or even looked at one but she would take me to parties and this is where i started meeting a lot of boys a boy asked me to be his girlfriend and i said yes this is where I had my first kiss. The next summer, my parents took me to visit my uncles. This is where I saw my cousin. We were both exactly the same age. And as soon as we saw each other, we were pretty much attracted to each other. I know, it's really disgusting and messed up. I was 15 at the time. This meant I didn't know anything about anything. My cousin would flirt with me all the time while we were visiting. And it kind of became a game for us. Before I knew it, he got me alone in a room and decided to kiss me. And after this, we just started making out all the time when we were alone. Then he started touching me. Now, no, I did not give him permission, but we were both 15 and it was just understood that we wanted it. And then we did the dirty, like all night. Part two is up. Lost my virginity before marriage and my parents want me to prove that I'm a virgin. And I lost my virginity to my cousin. So the first time I did it with my cousin, we did it all night. This was the first time I had ever done anything like that. At the time, I didn't think that I would ever have to then prove to my parents that I was a virgin years later. So after I lost my virginity with my cousin, everything went downhill. I started do doing it with other boys. And I even started dating a boy behind my parents' back. My parents, like I said, are super strict. When I was 17, my dad decided to tell me that he had already offered my hand in marriage to somebody. So that meant I was promised to somebody I had never even met. The boy that I was promised to lived in a different country. So four months later, he came with his parents. And when I met him, I was in love. He was extremely good looking, super smart, and he liked me right away. We were both really compatible in every single way. But then I remembered that I wasn't a virgin. The first night we met them, my parents brought up the fact that I was a virgin. And my fiance looked at me with the biggest smile on his face. Not me sitting there knowing that I had already done it with seven guys. From here on, I had to pretend like I was the perfect little virgin. So I basically cut off all the guys I was doing it with. Part three is up. I lost my virginity before marriage and now I have to prove that I'm a virgin to my parents. So after I lost my virginity to my cousin, I was screwed. My father promised my hand in marriage to a man who thought I was a virgin and his parents celebrated the fact that I was a virgin. Anytime they came to dinner, we would always somehow end up talking about how I was a virgin. It was like the hot topic with my father and his dad. This is when the wheel started turning. I started thinking of ways to tell my family that I was no longer a virgin. And the only thing that I could come up with was telling them that I was R-worded. But that's obviously a horrible idea because then I would have to accuse somebody and it would just be bad. So I decided to just simply confess. I sat my parents down and I told them that I was no longer a virgin. But when they asked me with who, I could not tell them it was my cousin. Instead, I told them it was some random boy from school. That's when my father told me that I had to prove myself a virgin to get married. So I decided to go to a gynecologist and pay him to say that I was still intact. All he did was sign some piece of paper that said I was basically a virgin. So I gave it to my parents and they were happy with that. So guess what I did on my wedding night to pretend like I was a virgin? I saved some period blood. Part four is up. I had to pretend I was a virgin on my wedding night and this is what I did. I saved some period blood for my last period. Since my father had promised me to a man that I had never met and who I did fall in love with, but I wasn't a virgin and was promised as a virgin, I had to do something. The wedding was absolutely beautiful and my new husband and I were getting to know each other so well. So I knew that I did not want to disappoint him because he thought that I was a virgin. So when it came time to getting naked and actually doing it, I was already used to it. So I pretended like it hurt really bad when he put it in. I froze in my period blood in a Ziploc baggie and I put it behind the bed underneath my pillow. So as soon as we finished, I had already scooped some blood into my hand and I just went ahead and rubbed it on. And it worked. He saw the blood, kissed me, and then we did it again. At this point, I just enjoyed it. No one will ever know this secret. And my husband thinks that I've only been his. So I guess it's a happy ending, right? Am I the arsehole for telling my brother that girls avoid him because he's creepy and not just misunderstood like my mum insists? So my younger brother, who's 18, has just started to show serious interest in relationships. He's a really sweet guy, but he often just says things that come across like really weird. I guess it's not so bad day to day, but it really does make his dating life a lot more difficult. For example, this one time we're at a beach club and he was chatting to a girl and she really did seem interested and engaged in the conversation. And just a little FYI, this girl was quite short and very petite. 
And my brother told her that she just looked so tiny and helpless. Which, you know, isn't too bad. But then he said he could easily abduct her because he could fit her in his bag. Now, because I know him, I know that he's not intentionally being creepy. But I just don't think that he understands that some things sound really creepy when you say them out loud. And this poor girl just did this fake laugh, walked off and never came back. Then a few days ago, we were in a cafe and he met a girl again. They ended up swapping numbers and he came to me and excitedly told me that they were texting. Then yesterday, he came to me all depressed and he showed me their text exchange. So Earlier that day, she texted him and she said that she wasn't a fan of scary movies because she gets easily spooked. But late that afternoon, she asked him if he wanted to hang out that weekend. And he jokingly said that he'd sneak into her room at night when she least did expect it and make her scream. He didn't think that was wrong at all and he only noticed something was up and she didn't respond to his text messages. So he's been pretty bummed out all day about it and he's been moping around the house. So I told him honestly and I said, you need to stop saying creepy things so that girls stick around. And then I said he's a big tall boy, which ups the creep factor to anything he says. He got very defensive and hurt and tried to say that he wasn't creepy. When my mum found out, she got all defensive of him and said it was wrong of me to label him a creep. She said that he's just a bit of a misunderstood soul and that I should have a little bit more tact instead of just insulting him. So I turned to my brother and I explained that he's not a misunderstood soul in other girls' eyes. He's just a big tall guy who says really creepy things. He got really upset and we had a big argument after that. So what do you think? I'm 25 and my husband, 42, have three children, a two-year-old son and a set of twin girls who are three months old. We live just down the road from my parents. I have four older siblings that all went to college, but I didn't. I'm the only one with kids. All of my family got together for Christmas last year. Whenever I try to engage in a conversation with my family, they seem to just ignore me. My relatives would hold our babies but not talk to me much beyond that. I was so alone. I was late in my first pregnancy when we got married. A few of my siblings had gotten married before I did and they all had very nice weddings with lots of guests. No one had any interest in coming to mine. We trashed the idea of a wedding and got married at the courthouse. I couldn't even get all my siblings to attend the little ceremony. We couldn't go on a honeymoon at the time so I was even more miserable. Recently, my sister told me that our family thinks that I'm just a dumb bimbo with no goals in life so I have babies instead. She says that's why no one values my input or opinion. They think I'm stupid for having children young. My children were not planned. They also think that I'm stupid for being with a man older than me, but he's my one true love. They don't want me to have any influence over large family decisions because they think that I'm dumb. They ignore me and don't make time for me. How do I get them to take me seriously? My boyfriend, 27, and I, 26, have been together for two years. He has a good heart and is normally rational, but his one issue is that he expects to come to me in every occasion, no matter how big or small. He even went with me to my ex-boyfriend's funeral after days of begging. Now, my best friend got married a few days ago. It was very small and only close family and friends were invited. My boyfriend couldn't come because of the plus one rule. He pitched a hissy fit saying that my best friend had no respect for my relationship and was shocked when he learned that I was still going to attend. He told me that if he can't go, then I'm expected to not go as well. But that's my best friend and I had to respect her rules. He gave me an ultimatum, either we go together or I stay home with him. I ended up going because again, I respected my friend's rules. He was angry with me and kept calling me the entire two hour drive then stopped. Later, I got a text from his friend telling me that he, my boyfriend, got into an accident and was taken to the hospital. I freaked out and he gave me the address and I had to leave the wedding and told my friends why. I was crying the entire drive home and kept calling his friend but got no response. I arrived to the hospital and asked for my boyfriend and they checked and told me that he wasn't there. My anxiety reached 160% as I kept calling his friends one by one. I just went home and there he was, along with his friend. He saw me and said that he was sorry, but this was the only way he could get me to come home after I left him alone. After the initial shock, I just blew up yelling at him about lying and making me leave my friend's wedding and having me literally go to the hospital and freaking out because of him. I kicked his friend out and we got into an argument. He kept talking about how much I love him, thus I left, which is my own doing and not his, and that he was just trying to see if I really chose my friend's wedding over him. He then argued that my friend caused this and I shouldn't agree with her to exclude him. I said what he did was horrible and I called him horrible and then went to my room. It was awful because my friends kept calling to check in on him because he thought that he was really in the hospital. He said I overreacted and then I yelled at the wrong person. Did I go too far? Am I the asshole for yelling at him for making me leave my best friend's wedding? Am I the asshole for telling my brother he's the biggest imbecile in the whole universe? I, 20 female, have an older brother, 23, and a younger brother, 14. My older brother, Derek, likes to humiliate people and call it pranks and used to do it to me until I called the police. Well, now he does it to our younger brother, Jim, who hates the pranks and our parents do nothing. Anyways, yesterday was Jim's birthday and we threw a small party with friends and relatives. I explicitly told Derek, no pranks. Dad brought out the cake, we were all excited, Jim blew out his candles, and then mom took off the candles to cut the cake. Before she had time, Derek rushes behind Jim, grabs his head, and shoves his face into the cake hard. Am I the asshole for telling my brother he's the biggest imbecile in the whole universe and needs therapy? Family and friends laughed, but I was mortified. I realized that Jim was struggling and I helped him get up and wiped his face carefully. He hissed in pain and when I looked closer, a piece of cake got stuck in his eye. It was becoming red and he was crying in pain. I was panicking, mom was panicking. I don't know what the rest of the family were doing, but I grabbed Jim and said, let's go to the ER. Then Derek said, there she goes being a stuck up B word and exaggerating. He's fine, clean the eye with some water. So I called him an imbecile and said he needs therapy. At the ER, they cleaned his eye with solution, but when I got back, the family was mad about what I said about Derek. 
Am I the asshole for telling my wife I want her best friend to leave after she invited her to live with us? My 38 wife 32 has invited her best friend 32 to live with us because she's going through a really messy divorce. She has her baby with her and I do like her friend and we're actually the godparents of her baby. I really hate the situation and really want her to leave because my wife basically has no time for me anymore. She used to cook for me and that doesn't happen anymore and we haven't been intimate since she moved in. I also really wish the kid wasn't here because she wakes up every single night. Not to mention the fact that we have a small apartment and there's kids toys everywhere. Am I the asshole for telling my wife I want her best friend to leave after she invited her to live with us? Not to mention we have a really small apartment and there's kids toys everywhere. They sleep in the living room which is where my Xbox is so I haven't been able to play that either. She also puts dirty diapers in the kitchen garbage and the whole house smells. And now my wife is talking about us watching the kid while her friend goes on a work trip for two weeks. I just really hate this and it seems unfair to me. Why is my life being turned upside down? Where's her ex-husband in all this? I don't know how long this is supposed to last, but it's not working and I told my wife I want her to go. Am I wrong? My wife poured a bottle of water on me and I think I'm done. This happened a few weeks ago. My wife and I were arguing about how to cut onions. I had stupidly thought that I could do it all, that I could chop up onions and add them to the chili as she asked. She came by and got pissed, telling me that I'd cut them too coarse, that they were supposed to be much smaller, and that the chili was ruined because I'd put them in the pot. I said, okay, let me just get them out. They're just on top, and I was just trying to do what you asked. I can cut them smaller, and I start to pull them out with the spoon. She says, no, that's okay, don't do it, she'll just do it. She pushes me out of the way and takes the knife out of my hand. I let go. I start to complain about how I did what she asked and if she wanted them put on the chili at the end, she should have just asked for that instead of me putting them into the chili while it was still on the stove. I desperately wish I could do something, anything right. I retreat to the other room as I'm pretty freaking sad. I'm 28 years old and I can't make canned chili apparently. I sit down on the bed trying to stay out of my wife's way so she can fix my mistakes. She brings in dinner and I'm ready to drop the problem. I eat and she eats half of her food then brings it back up. I apologize multiple times. She doesn't seem satisfied. I tried to explain myself then that I feel like maybe she should have communicated a little better if she'd wanted the onions as a garnish instead of just in the chili. She tells me I'm not listening, that I'm cutting her off. I don't understand. I feel like we're taking turns. I desperately try to stay calm, keep my voice quiet. As calmly as possible, I say that I would appreciate it if she could be more specific about what she wants. Then she snaps and pours the entire glass bottle of water all over me. As she does, I can hear myself saying, please don't, as water runs down my face and back. It's making a huge mess. My first instinct is to clean the water up, wipe it up, get the blanket dry. I tried so hard to be good. I tried so hard to keep my calm and it got me nowhere. I get my keys and leave, still crying. My wife starts crying as I walk out, telling me I don't care about our relationship and that I'm just abandoning her. I just tell her as calmly as I can that I need to be alone for a little bit. I go out for an hour and sit by the library. I'm cold and wet. She calls me several times. I don't really want to answer. I haven't been okay since this. I know it seems stupid, but this event has pulled up a lot of bad things she did to me in the past when she was going through a lot of things in her life. She's apologized for some, others she doesn't even remember. Verbal, emotional, physical. I don't think I can stay married. It's like everything keeps boiling up. I don't know why this. Maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know. This incident just sounds like it's the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh, uh, bro, what? I don't know why I thought this was a man, but it's a woman. Um, there's an edit. She goes, I want to add that I'm also a woman too. My wife and I are both women. Since many of the comments and responses are assuming I'm male. My ex-fiance wants to meet up after leaving me at the altar almost four years ago. I, 29 female, was supposed to be getting married to my fiance at the time, Jay. Everything was going perfect. I was in my dress, had my makeup on, taken pictures with my bridesmaids. I was pretty much ready to walk down the aisle when Jay's best man pulled me to the side and said Jay was gone. He'd gotten in his car and left and no one was able to get a hold of him. I came home to our apartment and all of his stuff was gone. He'd pretty much been a ghost ever since he left me and I had to force myself to move on. I ended up going on our honeymoon with my best friends and then put myself in therapy to heal from the horrible trust issues I had. 
I haven't heard from him once until today. I guess he got back into contact with an old mutual friend who gave him my number. Jay texted me and said he wants to meet up and apologize. I swore Jay was a dead memory, but my curiosity and desire to get closure with him is pestering me. My current boyfriend supports whatever I decide, but I feel out of respect for him and how wonderful he's been, I should ghost Jay. I'm very confused and have no idea what to do. It was part of a 12-step program and he was making amends. We met up at the park and my boyfriend came with me. He sat off to the side while Jay and I talked. I actually feel stupider after meeting up with him. There were a lot of things in our relationship that would have had me out the door if I had paid more attention and if he wasn't such a great liar. For the last year of our relationship, he had been doing drugs and cheating on me. He had been struggling with his sexuality for years. It's not surprising it ended this way now knowing the truth. His family is incredibly homophobic and they are horrible people. I wanted nothing to do with them when we were together. The drugs were something to get him through the day and act like he was in love with me. He had met his boyfriend at work and I had actually met him a few times when I dropped off lunch for Jay. His boyfriend said he needed to choose and Jay chose him. So he packed up his bags and pretended everything was okay until his boyfriend came to pick him up and they moved two towns over. He's no longer with his boyfriend. He thought he could quit the drugs once he was free of his family and the lying, but he couldn't. His boyfriend found out and left him. He kept going, getting high, hooking up with randoms. One of his regular hookups ended up ODing while they were sleeping in the same bed together and passed away. He then realized he had to get sober. He apologized for just not being honest with me and leading me on like he did. He wished he could go back and be truthful because I, out of everyone, would have been the most accepting of him being gay. He said he missed me when he left because even though he didn't love me romantically, I was his best friend. It was a lot to take in. I told him while I'm glad he's okay and is doing better, I prefer for us to not have any contact moving forward, but I do forgive him. He said he understood and he was only in town for a few more days and then he'd be gone for good again. I'll admit, when I got home, I cried. My boyfriend held me and ordered my favorite takeout. He's been really the best and didn't pressure me to talk about anything until I was ready. So if I got anything out of the worst day of my life, it's led me to who I'm with now.